What's up guys, Omni here. You guys know how it goes, another day, another video. Last night I tweeted I sleep. What recent news, topics, tweets, videos you want me to talk about tomorrow? Hey yeah, guys, today is Friday, January 12th. That's right, the legendary Friday episode. And oh my god, okay. <laughs> Buckle in. It's like a small look at some of the topics you guys wanted me to talk about. And why is everything so freaking random and cursed? Like I, <laughs> like nothing is going to make sense. There's no common theme. Like you're, we're about to do a whole bunch of deep dives into a lot of things that me and probably you don't know about about for some reason i have this inkling feeling that it's going to be a good time a very legendary cursed video here is the boy <laughs> since you guys want to see him we got to start off the cursed video with a blessing okay and he misses you guys he loves you guys he was sunbathing and he says good luck on today's video and like and subscribe if you guys haven't already okay that's the deal let's start off with a big one okay let's talk about jesus christ your lord and savior have you uh <laughs> apologized for your sins today because apparently lil nas x has not if you guys don't know lil nas x just dropped a track well, well i think he plays as jesus <laughs> He has a music video and everything, okay? I'll give you the deets on that as well. But apparently Kai Sinat saw the music video. He was super big baby rage mad. Ray Jack said, Christians when gays are not Christians, mad emoji. Christians when gays are Christians, mad emoji. So <laughs> I got to show you guys the clip. It's it's all in context. Uh, and then if you haven't seen the new Lil Nas X album, I'll maybe try to show clips of the music video. I'm going to get yoinked if I show anything longer than five seconds, but yeah. No! Oh my. Yo, Lil Nas X, you could eat my whole. I hate that, bro. Nah, that shit just popped up in my head, bro. That, bro. Nah, what word of my mother, bro. God gonna handle you in the right way. I, I didn't even talk about that yet, bro. But look, God gonna handle you, bro. And you're, bro. What he did. No, bro. What he did. No, bro. God gonna handle that. Real. What he do. Nah, bro. I'm never gonna explain it, bro. But bro, no. He's extremely no, disrespectful, gotta... bro. He disrespect. He disrespectful. Okay, religion, tell bro. me how he disrespect it, cause bro, you can't be on that bad time. I'm just sitting in the corner on bad timing. Go on his page, bro. <laughs> Hey, yo, he disrespect, he disrespect, he disrespect, he disrespect God himself. That's 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 Christianity, crazy. like Christianity. Yes, he disrespect the whole he culture. Was, he bro. was mocking. He was mocking it. Yes, mocking, making Nigga, fun of. Nas actually, he, he's, who's that next to him? He said, "Yo, I can't. You can't do this. I can't be in the corner being on bad time, man. What's happening here?" So yeah, this man is, is super angry. What did Lil Nas X do? This was the initial clip that kind of pissed a lot of people off before his actual video came out. It's him, you know. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys went to church, right? This didn't actually happen. I haven't been to church in a, in a, in a while. But back when I was a kid, they would serve you uh, the, the the blood of Christ over here on the left. And on the right, they would serve you these like these wafers, these like tasteless cookies or whatever. And I call it like the flesh or whatever. And I used to love that. That was my favorite part of church, okay? When I was a kid, I didn't understand what was going on. All I know was that people were telling me I was going to go to hell if I did bad things, right? And I was like, oh, man, I don't know what those bad things constitute of. But I don't want to go down there. It sounds like it will be really hot. Let me make sure I please this Jesus Christ guy, right? But then during the same thing, they'd be like, now, by the way, time to eat him. I'd be like, what? <laughs> what we're really about to drink the, bl the blood of... <laughs> <laughs> so he came over here and he made this nine second clip right here, which it was a mockery to Christianity that pissed off a lot of people prior to him actually dropping the video. <laughs> now, I remember the juice was tasty. I think in some places it was wine. Uh, some places it was cranberry juice. I don't know. All of those as a kid, I always look forward to this part of the service. Even Spotify is getting on your boy. It says Lil Nas X is back with more mid music. <laughs> That's legit Spotify, yo. Now, obviously, it's probably a joke, okay? Lil Nas X probably told... Lil Nas is all about marketing, okay? Whenever he drops a track, he, for the next two weeks prior and beforehand, he just goes absolutely ham, pissing as much people as possible, and then he wins awards with his albums. That's usually what happens, but, uh, yeah. Tweeted, the prophecy has been fulfilled. <laughs> Where he plays as Jesus, playing basketball, and the music video, and he's crossing him over. It's it's a legit scene in the video. I Oh my god, how do I show you guys copyrighted stuff without getting yoinked off this platform? I want to show you so bad. It's ridiculous. It's like a, a film. It's like a it's like watching Space Jam for the first time. But for whatever reason, instead of being Michael Jordan, it's Lil Nas X. I'm gonna just do it, okay? So he has a new track out called J. Christ, okay? And um, I listened to it, and it's a 
It's a little bit of a banger, okay? It's one of those songs, if you don't like it, you'll hear it on the radio plenty of times, and then suddenly you'll start liking. I already know how this works. This happens every time when it comes to, to, to radios, and especially like his kind of music. It's catchy. It's extremely catchy. All right, see, see, that's all you really kind of need to know. That's that's the that's the energy, okay? You know, a bunch of gay dudes out here dancing, tongue out, <laughs> and and making fun of Christianity in a way and mocking Jesus Christ. That's the whole thing, right? Last time he was team the devil, and now he's like team God, right? Like last time he was getting put under because he was making blood shoes with actual blood on it, and now he's getting mocked because he's team Jesus Christ, but he's <laughs> but he's joking around with. Oh no, man! What the heck? Did he just go that. I, I know. <laughs> the reason why I'm here for this, by the way, is because I like the controversy. Okay, I love Lil Nas X stirring the freaking pot, especially when it comes to Christianity and religion. You got a whole bunch of people and hypocrites coming out of you know left and right, being like, "You're going to hell, Lil Nas X. How dare you?" And calling him names and 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 hurling insults and threatening his life and everything. And I'm like, dang. I didn't know that was the Christian way. I thought the Christian way was to, to turn the other cheek or, you know. <laughs> and then it creates the conversation between him versus Christianity. Is he disrespecting Christianity, the religion? Probably. Maybe. It, I'm not in that battle, though. Okay, I'm not going to jump in the way of Lil Nas X. And I'm not going to jump in the way of Christianity. I'm going to sit back here and eat some chips. Watch it all go down. Oh, God. I like it. I like it. I like it. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Christians. I'm I'm sorry. I like it. <laughs> so here's a quick update about a game that's coming out. Agent V and a lot of you guys told me said Peak will soon be playable on the Switch. And it's Golden Sun. It's a game that a lot of people have told me over the past years and years that I need to play this game. I've never played it. I've heard of it, but apparently it's peak. It's epic. Everyone's been speaking his praises. Every time I say I don't play it, people look at me like I missed out on like the most epic video game of all time, the most epic history of all time. But it says Golden Sun and Golden Sun The Lost Age is going to be available for Nintendo Switch Online plus Xbox Pax members on January 17th. That's next Wednesday. I'm a huge fan of OG RPGs. I wonder if it's going to age well. Is it a remake or is it just the game? Alright, I might have to peep it. I, I might have to give it a check. It's not a remake. It looks like it could definitely use a remake because it's super old. But I don't know. I'll, I'll try it and I'll let you guys know what I think. If I can get into it, I'll get into it. Guys, okay, I'm very excited for this. All right. <laughs> TOA said it's real. That's right. Cult of the Lamb is coming up with a new update as of January 16th. I'm so frustrated. There's so many things coming out next week and gaming. Oh my, there's power. There's so much. I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be at MAGFest from like Wednesday to like Sunday morning. I'm going to be gone over there. If you guys are going to be at MAGFest, come catch me. I'll be there, you know, hanging around, chilling or whatever. But yeah, there's so many good games coming out. This one being one of the ones I've been waiting for for a while. It's the Sins of the Flesh update you asked for it. I'll play the trailer. Hopefully there's nothing with music copyright striking here, but yeah. <laughs> you can, you can, you saw that? You can bet babies down. You can snoo snoo and then have the babies and now you can breed. I had played this game frame one, like the first day it came out and I was absolutely addicted. What's so cool about it too, is that if you play it on Twitch, you can name the people, the little slaves here that you get here after like your Twitch streamers. You guys who are watching, I'll probably be streaming this on Twitch. And when every time you make a new person here, a new worshiper, it's named after you. It's pretty freaking cool. This game looks, it, I, I know it's got the whole double theme going on. We just talked about Lil Nas X, but this is different. This is wholesome. 
<laughs> it's a cult, quite literally, right? And he's raising a freaking cult. If you guys have not played this game, it's super fun. It's a roguelite where it has really good combat, but then it has like elements of like farming. I'm not, um, you know, uh, sponsored by them in any way, but I do have early access. So maybe I can play it before I go. And I have drops as well. If you guys want to come through on twitch.tv slash Inferno Omni, I, I got a key, an early key from some gang gangs and I got the Twitch drops as well. We'll play it early. And if you guys want, yeah, that's, that's what we'll do. We'll do that. So here's another quick update. Okay. Remember we talked about Twitch and I joked about how they're broke and how they never make any money. And if somebody was in the comments like, Omni, you don't say all that stuff. You don't know what you're talking about. I mean, even though you're an accountant and you're into finance and stuff and you look up 10 Qs and 10 Ks and you've looked up the Amazon subsidiaries and you've watched the pile of the profits and everything, don't say stuff that you don't know about. Well, <laughs> Twitch came out with a statement talking about their layoffs of one thirds of the employees there. And the actual CEO confirmed to everybody that was out there that was wondering that, yes, Twitch is broke. They are not making any profits, okay? I know what I'm talking about, homie, all right? They're a cost center. I've told you this time and time again. Amazon is a subsidiary that makes a lot of money, and now they're cut in cost, okay? They might be a necessary call center because Twitch, again, is still like the biggest to do it. But in order for them to gain any kind of profit or revenue, yeah, they're going to have to cut costs. They can't make exclusive deals like YouTube gaming does. Like it's not going to be in a way where Twitch actually creates a profit in the way that is currently being ran. Twitch CEO Dan Clancy went live yesterday addressing everything going on Twitch, especially the fact that Twitch is not profitable. So I'll play the clip. This is the CEO Dan Clancy talking about it. There was an hour where he talked about it yesterday on a VOD, which I'll maybe go over later tonight if I do end up streaming and we can talk about that in detail but here's a minute that everyone's been pushing out where he literally says that Twitch is not profitable now this is not the end of Twitch okay I just want to let you guys know that Amazon fully supports Twitch they're not going to let go of this bad boy at all but they do want to drive this into a place where Twitch somehow does become profitable. They want to create that for a fact. This is a huge asset for them to lose, even if it is a cost center, because it can turn into something big. Twitch has too much potential, okay? They just need to stop playing games with this freaking artistic nudity, dog. What do you gain from this? Are you really that desperate to get a profit that you're going to turn it into a half cam site, dog? You think we'll see further cost saving in the future? It feels like maybe the days of prime subs could be numbered. Um, Prime is a critical program for many streamers. Um, uh, we've already been looking across the company in terms of um, how to set us up for the long term. Um, uh, I think we, we will continue to evolve different aspects of our program because part of what I'm trying to do is get us into a framework that can live over a long time. Um, the size of the company is one of those things that gets us to the right size for the longer period of time. Um, when we did Partner Plus, we structured that so that we... Pause on that. Y'all see that? That's not just me. That's some... <laughs> is this what I get for liking the little Nas X song? Oh my God, some demonic video type stuff here. Continue to move that threshold. We're going to keep looking across um, our, our strategy with streamers. We did this with the Ads Incentive Program. We want to get to where we can continue to grow and adapt and change as the market changes. And um, so... There may be other changes, but I will tell you, Prime is an important part uh, for our for our viewers and our creators. So it's important for us to make sure Prime um, still exists in some. So they said they want Prime to exist, but they might be touching it. Prime, by the way, if you guys don't know, is that if you have Amazon Prime, you're allowed to basically gift a sub to yourself and sub to one channel with one free sub. That's basically how it works. You you pay. $1.99 or however much it costs. I don't even know how much it costs anymore for Amazon Prime. And then you can come to Twitch. Then you can use <laughs> once a month a gifted sub. That we've implied this before um, where we say we need to run it sustainably. But, you know, I can be, I'll be blunt. We aren't profitable at this point. Amazon has been extremely supportive of Twitch. Um, and a big thing for being sustainable over time is ensuring that um, we don't lose money. And that's a big part of my job because that's going to be what makes sure we can be here for a long term. So, yeah, Twitch is broke and they've been burning through money. What are they doing wrong? This is why they're, they're cutting costs or they're they're trying to figure out a way to create a sustainable, profitable business. 
but everything costs too freaking much. And that's basically it. Now it brings the question of is is how? Like again, the the only way for them to actually turn this into a profit, what they're saying here is that they need to make more money, but also they need to spend less. That means anything that they're doing that gives people an expenses to their program, they're going to cut. Does that mean that when it comes to the the Twitch sub split, are they going to change that as well? They probably will, but they're going to figure out how to cut costs across the board and generate more revenue. That could be more ads. There is going to go in a direction that a lot of people are going to like, but they're trying to create a sustainable company. They're focused on the wrong things. They're still focused on this whole nudity stuff. and That whole thing was a waste of freaking time. Who is over here wasting all the resources for people to focus on, on how to get cam girls to be on this website legally? Like that's not what you do here fire whoever <laughs> i ain't gonna tell anybody to fire nobody but yeah that's twitch they broke and uh, they're gonna try to get unbroke and there's gonna be some changes happening definitely in 2024 after 33 percent of the people of the employees have already been laid off i'll let you guys know what those changes are as they occur another quick update okay i don't think this is something we need to be too worried about but we're gonna address it anyway jack septic i might be quitting youtube <laughs> No, I'm just going to say it right now, Jacksepticeye, whether you're watching this video or not, we will not accept your resignation, okay? You're just not allowed to. You, Mark, no, mm -mm. you guys are stuck here. You're, you're locked in, okay? You signed a contract when you became too good of a YouTuber that you, you, we can't have back to back to back to backs, okay? We lost Tom, we lost freaking Matt. Now we're not losing Jack, okay? It, it's not happening. Jack had tweeted, MatPad's video made me realize that I've been doing YouTube for a literal third of my life. And then Mr. Beast was like, I've also been doing YouTube for 60% of my life. I can barely remember the pre-YouTube days, okay? And then Opera GX down here says, don't do it, Jack. <laughs> I'm down here. I said, do not. It's interesting. I've been doing YouTube for a very long time as well. I think I started, I think I've been doing it for a third of my life as well. I mean, I was never... Uh, successful for the entire <laughs> point of time i've only actually been recently successful where i can do it full time for like the past you know like three years two to three years but i've been making content since i can't even remember i think at least a third of my life bro just like all these other people so yeah, guys, it might be time for me to hit the old dusty trail. But no, no, no. Look, Jacksepticeye is not going anywhere, okay? And I'm not going anywhere. As long as we reach 1 million subscribers, okay? And by the end of the year. Actually, by the end of the month. You guys got until January 2024, all right? Stop playing games and tell your friends about me. Oh, but I am kind of worried. There is a trend with a lot of people who are either leaving or taking breaks. And a lot of it has to do with January ad rates, okay? <laughs> videos that would have made like a good amount of money back in december january oh boy I don't, i'm not feeling so good it's, it's hurting out here this revenue i need i need some sponsors i need <laughs> i need y'all help man come to the patreon i'm about to make some uh some good videos for you guys for the end of the month of january that you're going to really like but yeah man it's a lot of people bail out on january february march because ad revenue is just really bad but jack septic i could believe him he's successful he's on top He's a rich millionaire. He has a girlfriend. I don't know if it's his fiance or not. Maybe he wants to start a family soon. I mean, like, I could see Jack being the kind of guy to be like, all right, guys, I'm done. I made it. I'm at the top. And now I'm going to go find something else to do. That's, I can see him starting a new game plus. But I forbid it. Okay. We will, we will capture you just like Markiplier if you guys get any kind of weird ideas and then put you in a dungeon and force you to make videos forever and ever. All right. This is one of the curse topics, okay, that I told you guys in the beginning of the video. <laughs> a lot of you guys are going to have no idea what's going on and you're going to be kind of like what the hell am i watching all right this is this is the one this is at least one of the one new year new jay and a lot of you guys asked me to talk about it it's a big freaking deal apparently youtuber verbal ace paid fifty thousand dollars for a soft core busy pop mv all right and if you don't understand any of the words i just said here okay <laughs> in layman's turn a youtuber was so horny that they spent fifty thousand dollars to basically get an artist who was very well known for a show that was like nominated and i think won best animation of the year for 2023 when it comes to youtube there has been hotel one of their animators got paid 50k to, to, to make a horny video and I watched the video and I oh it mm, I, I, I oh Vigo gave me some more context said apparently the cartoon beat 
Box Battle Guy, Verbal Ace, spent $50,000 on softcore music video for Charlie from Has Been Hotel. <laughs> Charlie is the, the girl that you saw in there that I'll show a little bit more of you there. Allegedly. Someone found the video and now it's being passed around and now Dizzy Pop has seen it. News I didn't think I would see today. So the, the equivalent of this, guys, is like if somebody from Disney or no, 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 somebody from here's a, here's a better example. Whoever created Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse, the animators there, you know, somebody <laughs> took the exact same animation that you saw from Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse and they took Gwen from the show, right? Her. And then they made a horny video with some YouTuber <laughs> three minutes long music video and the exact same animation. And that's what's happening here. Here's a little bit of more context, okay? I'm gonna try to play the video. I don't think it can get copyright strike because it got leaked, but it's really cursed, okay? And so me and FCG Games made some replies exposing Verbal Ace's hideaway project that apparently was $50,000 that I claimed financially bankrupted the man and made him cancel cartoon beatbox battles. Now some popular accounts are posting about it. So let me, this man went into debt the bankruptcy in order to make <laughs> oh no oh that's some levels of horny i ain't never at least it's forever immortalized but stop playing with me bro cartoon beatbox battle suffered one of the worst delays of its kind in season one six months for an episode the episode black panther versus deadpool released june 5th 2021 six months after was pennywise versus patrick this tanked his channel but what has he been doing for all that time well he told us in an official server i'm pretty sure a few months later that there was a special project that he made a project involving him and the has been hotel universe a former friend of mine hydro animates creator i should be a very controversial I had show me some screenshots of it before the music video would even be on YouTube nobody really had any idea what the hell it was about not even me or my friend but we all knew that it cost a lot and it wasn't until 2023 where I came back to the CBB community where it was brought back up by a friend and it was revealed by verbal ace that it was actually finished and released somewhere he told us it costed him $50,000 and that it was too mature from the post on his channel apparently he said he made it because the music video for the song was way too disgusting Disgusting. having a woman singing making out with old people and even children so he made his own version all we knew back then was that as a music video animation of a song he didn't make it was has been hotel related it's somewhere on youtube eventually someone found it in the ybb community i actually have a recording to me and my friends watching it first we mostly kept the video as a secret eventually more and more people found out about it nobody was allowed to mention the video by any means yada 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 and that's basically what happened that's all of this is just more stuff but that's how it basically got to this point in case i haven't explained who verbal ace is enough okay here's an example of some of the content that he made <laughs> Sonic turning into supersonic and then beatboxing. I did not have that on my 2024 radar, but here we are. Anyway, let's just get to the video, okay? I can't play it, okay? I literally cannot. I maybe can show you some screenshots, but I can't. It will get me age restricted. I've already tested it here on YouTube, okay? But this image basically, <laughs> It's a two minute and 55 second animated video using the song uh, Hideaway, which is actually pretty good. I really like the song. But in this freaking animation, right, this girl from freaking Has Been Hotel is basically, uh, uh, how do I put this? She's a predator, okay? she's She finds this guy and basically is like, and locks him down and, and cuffs him up and makes sure that he can't move so that he can, she, she can goon on him, okay? She's, she's infatuated with verbal lace and he paid $50,000 for this freaking goonery. People were upset because they could have paid it to his animator so that he could make more, you know, beatboxing videos. But he said, nah, I, I, I can't imagine paying 50K for a three. What, what was he going to do with this content? What was the point? Like, was there a, <laughs> what was he doing this for? It basically starts with this chick right here. Okay. She's, she's summoning him basically into her universe. This is verbal ace. He's sleeping. He gets summoned into the Hasban hotel universe. And from what I understand, the, the girl that's over here too, as well, I think she's actually a lesbian, but here, nah, she wants verbal ace really bad and then here she is extremely excited and extremely horny okay like like <laughs> this man sprints out and she literally chases him basically like infatuated like you're not gonna go anywhere i'm coming after you okay i get it so you guys know if the roles were reversed blah 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 but yeah it, it's it's definitely got that vibe to it captures him with her powers then you know it's like yeah i love you and then puts him into a freaking hotel handcuffs him 
and then she takes off her clothes and you know nothing actually occurs but it implies that it does occur she keeps switching from lingerie to lingerie man's is laying on the bed with a, a freaking boner with a happy face i just can't <laughs> Verbal ace, what did you do? Why? Why, man? Oh no, we lost our guy to the goonery. No, no, 50k. There's, 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 there's 50k, brother. <laughs> it's actually really well animated. Who was the animator? And and now I'm curious. Vivzy Pop, the guys who make Hasbun Hotel. Are they going to be pissed about this? What do they know about? They're going to know about this. What does this mean for, for them? For those of you guys who don't know, this is Vivzy Pop. Her, this is, I thought Vivzy Pop was a company. Hey, yeah, my name is Vivian. I like to animate cartoons and songs. And the pilot for Hasman Hotel has been four years has basically already had a hundred and million views. They're absolutely huge and probably one of the biggest animation like uh, YouTube creators out there. I, I thought it was a company for some reason, but I guess it's just a person. So I did a bit more digging, okay? And I realized this was also the person, Vizibot was, they, they were, <laughs> people were talking about them because apparently their animators weren't getting paid a lot. I believe they were saying they were getting paid very, very little for per second per frame of the animation. It is a team, okay? It just happens to be run by Vivian Madrano, Vivzy Pop here, but does have a team of animators behind their creation when it comes to Hasman Hotel, and I think there's another uh, series that they have on YouTube called Hell of a Boss. But the girl that you have seen in his uses was Charlie. So now I need to know. <laughs> People were like, their animators are not getting paid enough. And then Verbal Ace basically was like, yeah, I got you guys covered. No way. Here's here's some horny. Give me some money. 50K. And that going to I, I, what? happens next wrap up this entire ridiculous wild story by the way uh yeah that verbal lace was basically getting packed up because people were dropping screenshots of him in some discord where he's being a bit homophobic and transphobic and uh damn i'm not gonna go through the screenshots guys all you need to know is like there's there's receipts on receipts, like a couple of pages of him talking about things that don't make him look so good for the community. So, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, guys, that's the cursed story. I told you it was cursed. Rubble Ace, do 5 million subscribers, beatboxes, and uh, has his own animation thing. Got it done by Vivzy Pop. And it. I, I like the song uh, there. I liked the music video. The music video in itself, like the animation was really good. The theme was a little out of pocket. <laughs> Um, and yeah, man, I need, I need some, uh, I need some milk because I need to recover from this. This is, that was, that was a rabbit hole. I'm actually glad that we went down the rabbit hole together. I want more stuff like this. So absurd that I don't even know what I'm getting into and I'm walking out of it a little confused. <laughs> You guys ready for some more cursed activity? That's right. I told you this was the cursed episode, okay? And I'm about to introduce to you guys the greatest game of all time that's about to drop next week, okay? You you like Pokemon? You kids at home like Pokemon? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we like Pokemon. I like Pikachu. Okay, well, well, I'm about to show you the evolution of Pokemon. That's right. Pun intended, all right? This is the next best Dang, J Kid had said, wait, this game is real? And I've been talking about it for a while now. How I can't wait to play Pal World, aka Peak. The latest trailer feature featuring a large amount of pals and field balls this has been released. Let me let me let me play this trailer for you guys, okay? What do you mean by that? Let me let me show you. That's right, you saw that. She was riding on a Pokemon while shooting with guns, okay? You got the Power World, you got them working as slaves. You can fuse. You got shout out to CryptoZoo. This is, this is what I'm here for. That's what I want to do. I want to ride on a super huge Pikachu leg type plushy thing. And we both have guns. The Pal World creature here has a freaking uh, sentry gun. And I got my assault rifle and we're shooting the other. Oh my Lord. What's happening here? Oh, they're doing experiments on the Pal World creatures. 
They're forcing them to make guns? They get eaten? It just blew up a clip fairy look alike. There's look at that mess. Oh my god. This is this is peak. <laughs> Egg bombs? I'm here for it. That's all I'm saying. And that's that's Lucario's brother right there. Um uh Boo Cario. Okay, I'm I am ready for it. Guys, this is sad and breaking news. We lost another good one here. Cooking with Linja. Chef dies after cancer battle at age 67. Lynn Davis amassed 17 million followers for her cooking videos that feature her dancing. This sucks. This sucks. I just got hip to her actually recently in 2023, and she has been awesome she's an older lady who makes cooking videos very well edited she's funny she's got hilarious i saw her on one of the the trends i think it was the the mcdonald's the purple dew trend or whatever and that's how i got hip to her very entertaining and we lost her as of uh today i found out that she's passed away from cancer obligatory fuck cancer in case you guys haven't heard of her you probably have and you might have forgotten but here's like a here's a video that she has here. here's a tiktok to play in honor for making berries and cream cookies berries and cream cookies what am i a little lad a little yolk <laughs> what it's faster linda what? What? <laughs> freeze dried you got it Half of each dough, combine those thorns. Wow. Scoop. <laughs> Maybe I am a little lag. That's wild. Was that the Minecraft shoe thing? Oh my god. Cooking and that's just one of her videos of like many. Okay. This this was her energy and her life for a very long time. And we lost a good one to cancer. Rest in peace to Linja. A lot of people really saddened and taken back from this one because she's just one of those, it, it one of the good ones, right? It's one of the, the good contents out there. If you're going to watch TikTok, if you're worried about TikTok or the poison, if you're ever trying to be on social media and you want to be here and have good energy, like she is quite literally the epitome of it. You can't watch too many cooking with Linja videos, okay? It will always be fun and wholesome and a good time with no kind of negative energy. So I hope, uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, condolences to her family. And um, yeah, man, I, it's sad to report this, but yeah, she is gone and uh, rest in peace to the homie. So a lot of you guys asked me to talk about Catherine and Austin McBroom of the Ace family. They're getting a divorce. That's huge these was the, the ace family was one of the biggest families on youtube when it came to family and vlog channels and all of that you guys probably know about this sphere where, where people uh have families and then they broadcast to their entire audience hey here we're a family and and we're going to monetize this and record every single day of our lives we're going to record our kids or trips everything all the privacy is gone and we're going to turn this family into a business but it looks like the wife here Catherine mcbroom said as i start the new year i will challenge myself in ways that i've never done before 2020 24 will be my year of transformative change and with this taking place one of the steps in my journey is the difficult decision to leave my marriage we have mutually agreed to a divorce and will part amicably our paths as a couple have shifted and has created challenges that are irreconcilable what are these challenges well sure there's got to be many of them there's obviously i don't know i'm not in there I, I don't know the details okay she might spill the tea somewhere on an interview later but this was one of the families at the top of the youtube game and now they're breaking up as heartbreaking as this is i also feel liberated i've spent the past few years prioritizing my children and honoring my commitment to my family all the while i seem to be losing myself and my own personal happiness our main priority will be to stay united as parents and to continue creating a stable happy and loving environment for our children thank you for all my supporters for giving me a safe space to be able to use my voice and share our love i love you all so much and i'm beyond grateful for all the support we've received from you throughout all these years as a couple and austin you're my best friend that will never change so yeah the end of a legacy we, we were talking about how things are ending and youtubers are like kind of retiring and quitting this in itself is kind of a way right you have a youtube channel about a family and people being married together right and then th th that's now ends the youtube channel whenever you have relationships and you end the relationship yeah end the youtube channel as well well more than likely unless they have some type of dlc post divorce type 
content. I don't know. They, they could actually get away with that. Swoop said, while I'm not interested in celebrating the end of someone's marriage, I do hope this means less cameras shoved in their children's faces to make content they could never consent to, to pay the family's bills. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. It's like with these family channels, a lot of these kids get abused. We already talked about the situation that happened with, uh, oh my gosh, the... I, I'm, I'm forgetting her name. We, we talked about her. I'm just having a blank, but she's currently in jail for, for doing heinous things to her kids. She had a family channel as well. Like a lot of these parents expose themselves to, to being actual terrible parents when they start publicizing their kids on the internet for, for content and views. Already in itself, kind of questionable, okay? It's not anything new. There are family type blogs and channels on national television that we've seen over the years and stuff, but it gets really murky when you start monetizing kids and their, their private lives and then you have no actual agency to control that. In case I didn't make it clear how big they were, they had 18 million subscribers, okay? Answering all the questions, a nice, huge, happy family here okay one of the, the biggest people i could think of one of the biggest family channels that are out there as you guys can see just from coming to the channel the last video was actually done seven months ago that was the last time they made any content on this channel and they were absolutely freaking killing it so it's uh yeah it's 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 all over man i don't again i'm not the type of person either to celebrate any kind of like separation here or any kind of divorces that's that's not the kind of energy that i want to give so Sad to see the ending of some things. I mean, I know that divorce is kind of normal as well, but hope the best for everybody and all the parties involved. And uh, yeah, you hate to see it happen. All right, here we go again. Another Splatfest. Time to put on the straight face and try to get this win. Okay, Super Jacob said this will be a victory. If you guys don't know, Splatoon 3. That's right. We're back at it again. And we have another Splatfest. It's going to be between who do you spend the holidays with? Friends? Family or solo? Now, I don't think there's a wrong answer here. You could spend, uh, you know, the holidays with friends and families. All of it's cool, but right? But our girl Fry in the middle got family. And we all know, we watched Vin Diesel say it time and time again for every Fast and Furious movie out there. It's all about family. This should be a win. This should be a W. I don't think anybody can disagree. You know, family, even friends be considered family, right? And nothing wrong with the other two, but this should be an easy W. And yet I get the feeling that the matrix and the racism is going to continue to happen and they're not going to give my girl the W, okay? So it starts here today at 4 p.m. It lasts for two days. I'll see if I can probably participate one or two of the days on Twitch. <laughs> And, uh, oh my god, we gotta get Fry this W so we can finally end the Omni Racist arc forever, okay? Like, I just, I'm I'm done hating. I'm done being a hater. It's, it's exhausting being a hater, but I have to carry this burden for as long as not possible until she gets the W she deserves. So guys, we'll end this with some finance news, okay? Something that you guys probably really need to know if you guys are curious about investing and whether you care about cryptocurrency or not this is something that's going to impact the market in a super revolutionary huge way just as of yesterday bitcoin spot etfs got approved and have officially been implemented in several hedge funds and companies so that now the normies of the world are now able to quite literally invest in the concept of the bitcoin currency now if you have no idea what i just said okay i will explain it to you in very lamest terms and what this might mean for some of you at home i don't know if i've read this already but breaking the sec approves the first spot bitcoin etf per the sec website the security exchange commission okay they govern all of the transactions and the finances and the business of the world, okay, they make sure that everything runs Dijabu and okay and legally, and you have to go through them in order for you to continue to run your business. And if they don't approve of the way that you run your business because you're not following the rules, then you will get axed or destroyed, okay? It's the SEC. You don't mess with them. Anyway, for quite some time now, huge hedge funds, hedge funds being basically companies that have a crap load of money, all right? <laughs> when I say a crap load, I mean the most amount of money. We're talking BlackRock. We're talking Fidelity, Vanguard, we're talking about anybody who owns assets in many different sections around the entire world. They have been wanting to create a Bitcoin spot ETF for their own company. This basically means is that Bitcoin can go up and down. Right now, and I think it's chilling at like, uh, what, $48,000, $47,000 per Bitcoin. That's how much the price of Bitcoin is currently at the moment. And it goes up and it goes down. A couple years back, the highest it reached was 69000 but even maybe 
maybe three or four or five years back, it was all the way down to 2000. So <laughs> you guys remember that whole shebang bang. These are the approved Bitcoin spot ETFs, okay? You got Grayscale, you got Hashtex, you got Valkyrie, you got Invesco, Wisdom Tree, Franklin, BlackRock, Fidelity, Vanek, ARC21, and Bitwise. And when you see these fees here, these fees are basically what they charge you in order for you to invest in their ETF that follows the price point of Bitcoin. The higher the percent, the worse it is for you, the better it is for them. Grayscale being at the highest with 1.5%. I actually have a Fidelity account and it being at 0.25% and then it has their tickers and all that stuff as well. So yeah, it's officially here. This is revolutionary for several reasons. And if I still have your attention, I'll again, explain it to you like you're a freaking child. So I know some of you are at home are like cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Omni, is this like even a thing? Like, do people actually count this as money? Yes, it's a thing. It's not going anywhere, okay? It's a form of currency that you should probably know exists and know how it's going to move in case you ever want to invest in currency in the future. And even if you don't want to, you want to know that it exists because it's going to impact other financial instruments as well, specifically including the dollar, okay? Because these two are not <laughs> on the same wavelength. Bitcoin initially was kind of like a underground kind of thing where people would invest in this currency that was like supposed to be better than the dollar. It was supposed to be better Satoshi tokens, okay? There's only a limited amount of these things that you can mine and then it's gone forever. Whereas when it comes to like cash, right? If you live in the United States or any of these other places, right? You can print it. You can print it. It's paper, okay? If you want a million dollars in the United States, okay, you can literally print the cash and the money infinitely, which then lowers the actual value of the dollar in itself. Whereas this is a finite limited amount of uh, currency that you can own, which then creates its own individual value because after a certain point in time, you cannot create any more Bitcoin. This is what makes Bitcoin so valuable in itself. And then combined with the fact that Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency combined with Ethereum, it follows the blockchain. And if you don't know anything about the blockchain, oh my God, how do I? <laughs> blockchain log is short of it is like the matrix, okay? <laughs> Every transaction that you make on this blockchain thing is, is, is recorded every step of the way, right? It's very fast, lightning fast. Sometimes when you want to get money from one place to another, it can be pretty slow for the funds to happen. But if you do these things through the blockchain blockchain technology not being limited to just cryptocurrency by the way two separate things but it allows for faster financial transactions lightning speed and you can literally move currency like that very fast when you use crypto combined with the blockchain okay very important by the way if you're at home if you think blockchain is evil stop i don't care if you don't like cryptocurrency but blockchain is technology that is very freaking useful for the world and technology as a whole. Nothing to do with the concept of scamming. You can, you can push that about Bitcoin and Ethereum and all those and crypto if you want, but not blockchain technology. Don't get the two confused. Anyway, I'm rambling. The whole point that I'm trying to make is that for a very long time, it was underground, okay? And the SEC and all of these big hedge funds and nobody wanted to kind of acknowledge how important it was. But a few years back, all these people were like, yeah, whatever, Bitcoin is fake, is going and out as a fad. A lot of them were whales gobbling <laughs> the, the crypto and gobbling the Bitcoin as much as they can and just hoarding it and hoarding it and hoarding it while also saying it's stupid at the same time because they want to own as much Bitcoin as possible. Again, like I said, it's limited. And at one point in time, it's going to be stopped mining and then it's going to be no more Bitcoins out there for people to create. You cannot print Bitcoin. So basically now it's open up to the world. Okay. For all the people who are normies who didn't want to buy their own Bitcoin or their Ethereum like directly, who don't want to own their own wallet, their code wallet, and just keep it in storage, you can now buy ETFs, exchange traded funds for an expense ratio for you to basically invest in the concept of Bitcoin. That's the Bitcoin ETF. And then literally later, SEC chair Gary Gensler issued a statement on the spot Bitcoin ETF approval. This was a pretty big deal, okay? He's the chair of the SEC. He said, while we approved the listing and trading of a certain spot Bitcoin ETP shares today, we did not approve or endorse Bitcoin, okay? So what they're suggesting here is that we are approving of you to follow the price of Bitcoin, but we ourselves are not proving of the concept and the existence of Bitcoin, which is 
kind of backwards, okay? Because once you've reached this point at this phase at this level, you can't pretend to not see anymore, right? You've literally approved of ETFs that follow a currency. So you have to, at the same time, kind of endorse the fact that it exists. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you don't approve of it, but you're endorsing the fact that it does exist. So in a kind of a way, you're, you're approving of Bitcoin's existence, whether or not you approve that you think it's good or not. Anyway, there's going to be tons of financial gurus that you can follow on YouTube that tell you guys that Bitcoin Bitcoin is going to go to the moon and you need to start putting money in there now and yada, yada, yada. And they're going to tell you to follow their courses. And look, OK, I'm going to just tell you right now. OK, all right, it's, it's everyone's trying to take your money. OK, there are investments everywhere. People are going to get FOMO, a.k.a. Okay? They're going to feel like they're missing out, fear of missing out and all of this stuff out there. You got to be very safe on these streets, especially when it comes to investment vehicles. OK, because you are a pedestrian, especially if you are new to this game. OK, it's easy for you to get got and lose a lot of money that you did not intend on losing. OK, this is an opportunity for a lot of people and it's important for you to understand what's going on. For example, Bitcoin, ever since the ETFs got approved the past week or so, I think it's jumped up about maybe 12%, something ginormous. People thinking it's going to hit 50,000 pretty soon. And then a lot of people, you're going to see a bunch of articles where they say, yeah, Bitcoin is going to go to the moon. It's going to hit 100,000. Don't miss this wave. All right. These are people who are trying to get you to have FOMO so that you can put money into the market and they tell your friends to put money in the market and put it <laughs> over and over and over and stack it, stacking it up because then it works for them. The more people that get hip to the concept of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, and all this stuff, the more that Bitcoin goes up and up, the more popular it becomes and people feel like they're about to miss a big train, the more it incentivizes the people who already hold Bitcoin because it improves their value, okay? I'll talk a little bit more detail again on my Patreon in terms of what I plan on doing and executing. I do hold some cryptocurrency and I do hold investments, okay? And I have a very, <laughs> I've been investing for it quite a while. I'm used to be into options and calls and puts and I've been all over the fastest of the world and I can say for a very certainty that number one, it is important to invest. But number two, safe and boring is always the best way to go about it. Learn dollar cost averaging and use small amounts of money every month and just throw it into the most boring stocks possible. Okay. <laughs> Index funds, dividend stocks, even if you want to do Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay. Just, just literally just in my opinion, dollar cost average it is the tried and true. Cause whenever you try to time the market and try to make a quick 10 times, 20 times buck on this place, you will get got. All right. <laughs> so that's the whole Bitcoin ETF that's happening. All right. Uh, expect for more activity to be happening very soon. I would not be surprised to see Bitcoin jump all the way up to 50K by the end of next week. I also wouldn't be surprised to see it drop back down to 40K because it did a huge pump and dump in terms of the excitement of the ETF. Some people don't even feel like the ETF in itself should be changing the price of Bitcoin dramatically because you're not actually buying Bitcoin. There's a lot of talk about it. If there's anything big that happens, I'll keep you on the know. But just know that things are moving. And if you're curious about jumping on the train, be careful, play it safe. All right. And remember, the golden rule is that nothing comes for free and everybody is trying to take your money. All right, guys, that's all I have for today's video. If you made it in, do me a favor, drop a like, subscribe if you guys haven't already. You guys have a good weekend. I'll be trying to stream hopefully maybe once or twice this weekend just to come chill with you guys. OK, I feel like playing some video games and relax and I hope you guys have a good weekend. I'll catch you on Monday and then Wednesday. I'll also have a video for you guys and I probably won't have anything for you next Friday because I'll be at MAGFest. I'll be out there chilling and having fun. I know touching grass and stuff. So if you guys are out there, come say hi to me. I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. I love you. You guys take it easy. Peace.